When I first started doing my research about the R. Kelly story, I find it very interesting how many people wanted to tell the R. Kelly story like the man can't tell his own story. And then when I started to uncover the things motivating all these people to come out here on these platforms, and even though all these sources have been feeding information to these bloggers, I find it very interesting how much time they devote towards trying to debunk or discredit the information I give to my platform. Oftentimes, I've told you, if it wasn't for these janky-ass people using these platforms with malicious intent, a lot of information that I uncovered, I wouldn't even have access to. So when I watch these goofy-ass people continue to try to put me in the midst of their bullshit as I repeat, let me remind you why all these janky-ass people never had my attention and why the media, which is covering joy and Savage's letter to the judge should also focus in on these other individuals who wrote letters to the judge, who've been on these platforms, who even testified against the man in this past New York trial, as well as his 2008 trial. Nonetheless, when I give my audience certain information, it's not here to talk about who's for or against the man, because at this particular point, if he's willing to have some of these individuals around him, who the hell am I to say anything? Now, when it comes to this investigation, that is the topic in which I personally speak on, unlike the crash dummies out here. So when I come out here and say that I don't believe there was a full investigation and or that these people should be fully investigating all these janky ass sources who have misused these platforms, who have targeted individuals trying to incite the dumbass people following them to do the most, Clearly, common sense should kick in as to why I don't run with the nobody cares about the black woman stupid ass propaganda when everybody on these platforms show me how willing you are to ignore obvious bullshit just because you don't like a person when you see corruption playing out in your freaking face. Make it make sense. So let me remind you, just as some of these Jane Doe's want to allege they were recruited using a social media platform, I told you I sat in Facebook groups watching some of these janky ass people and their conversations. So when I then watch all these other people team up to put all this bullshit on the internet, it should be clear why I do the complete opposite and go against the bullshit considering I wouldn't know who the money man was if they wouldn't brought him on these platforms. I wouldn't know who's bickering over power of attorney if they hadn't brought them on these platforms. And above all, I wouldn't know who's out here maliciously scamming these people in these R. Kelly fan groups and then trying to make it appear as though R. Kelly is doing it. Now, am I going to argue with any of these goofy ass people? <laughs> I think not. I'm just going to remind you why I don't follow any of the slow, stupid-ass people, okay? Can I hear with you? What? ACP, do you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the phone. Look, you got some weed? Dang. You gotta get some. All right, hurry up. These and them here, everybody here, we waiting on you. I did have sex with uh, Bubba as well. No, we did not have a threesome, but me and Bubba had an, another relationship outside of Rob.
happening today in the child pornography trial of singer R. Kelly. Witness after witness identify those on that now infamous sex tape as the alleged victim and R. Kelly. CLTV's Randy Bellasoma was in the courtroom today. Joins us now from 26 in California with more. Randy. Sean, today for the first time we heard testimony that identified those on the tape from someone other than a relative, a friend, or a parent of a friend of the alleged victim. We heard from a former employee of R. Kelly who said at first she did not want to believe that it was him. Lindsay Perryman worked for Robert Kelly on and off from 1999 to 2006, doing everything from cleaning floors to handling the defendant's personal business. She told the court that included driving the alleged victim in the now infamous sex tape to and from his Olympia Fields home. She also testified to often seeing the girl at Kelly's recording studio, sometimes carrying a pillow and an overnight bag. The image that I saw looks exactly like Mr. Kelly, Perryman said, then IDing the female on the tape, citing her facial features and her cheekbones. During cross-examination, defense attorney Mark Martin inquired about Perryman's purported master's degree from a recording conservatory in Arizona, a degree she said took only months to acquire. I didn't go to Oxford or Harvard, no, Perryman replied. Also taking the stand was Jada Burnett, a family friend of the alleged victim. She said the female on the tape was about 12 or 13 at the time and noted her distinctive cheeks and facial structure. However, that's as far as she could go. Here's an exchange during cross-examination by defense attorney Sam Adam Jr. At some point, you'd have had to have seen her naked. You were so close, right? I've never seen her naked. 22-year-old Raven Gangler testified as well, saying the girl on the tape was her friend from junior high. She said that was something that was absolute, and said the alleged victim was very proud of her relationship with R. Kelly. Generation tape that, that was filled with all sorts of video noise where you couldn't identify, in my opinion, anybody. That's, 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 that's my view of the tape. Uh, there is, there's an idea out there that because he sat in that courtroom stoic and he didn't show emotion and he didn't uh, show uh, any kind of concern, and I heard that said about him, sitting next to him, because I did every day, if you recall, I sat next to him every day of this trial and listened to him and talked to him. He was a very caring and concerned person. He just knew that every move that he made was going to be criticized, every move that he made was going to be watched, every move that he made was going to certainly come out in a newspaper or on television, and so his way of dealing with it was to be stoic. Right, R. Kelly, really? Really? Now, I gave him R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how he got R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how I got the, e the emails between Azrael and R. Kelly. So you mean to tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? The article state that the other person was in trouble. It did not. It did not. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. You think we don't know? And I'm not saying that they can't pull no shit. But what I'm saying is I'm talking about the article at hand. There was a reason why the article didn't say what it said. And for people to make all these assumptions and, and oh boy, to be a lawyer, you should know. If the fans got something, they ain't going to announce it. They already got it. And, and if they going to do something with it, they going to do something with it. Ain't going to be no reporter letting people know ahead of time what's going on. When you hear fan investigation, everybody know that. Guess what? You hear after they made arrests, okay? You hear after that. With all these people coming out talking about all this work they were doing and this trial proceeds and we not see none of this evidence make it into the courtroom, I can't believe people are still listening to the rhetoric these people are putting out and continuously trying to provoke people to get a response when clearly anybody with common sense will see why I'm saying 
I don't give a fuck who for or against Robert Kelly at this point. What I do care about is the fact that people can blindly overlook all this bullshit they see playing out with these people trying to intimidate people online. Never mind the fact that they must not know in Tennessee all that internet talking don't mean shit to me. You're going to have to pull up. However, a threat is a threat. So when you all allow people to use these platforms to make threats in the name of Robert Kelly, and then they come out here putting all this information being used against the man, and then try to mind fuck you like you didn't see all this shit playing out, that's why I can't take a lot of these opinions serious, okay? So one more time for the stupid ass people that follow the dumb ass mofos that hadn't even read the indictment. First of all, like I told them dumb ass people behind the scenes, the fact that they wanted to come out here and keep making content trying to push a sexual relationship on Robert Kelly and Aaliyah, even though his charge was bribery. And then you got these goofy mofos over here interacting with Demetrius Smith and still to this day add me in chats with the goofy ass motherfucker. Y'all gonna have to excuse the hell out of me if I lose my patience watching these goofy people continue to try to harass me because they're dumb. So when y'all figure out how getting your entertainment from people on these platforms talking about murder for hire plots, among other things, and all the threats they issue, how the hell that was supposed to help Robert Kelly. Meanwhile, these goofy ass people keep putting my pictures in the bullshit, keep throwing my name in their bullshit. Because they too dumb to realize that when I put together a collage, I'm challenging the government to go and investigate they janky ass. And if you believe in me doing that, that means that I'm working against Robert Kelly. That would also mean that you believe he's telling these people or is barking orders as the government would like other people to believe. I personally do not believe that. Thus, I challenge them to do their motherfucking job. If it's a problem, guess who don't give a fuck? Have a good day. The parents, when you knew that's, that, that's what he was about to do, why didn't you call them? That's it. I'm, all right, this is where I, right, let me tell you. I didn't call the parents. I, why, I worked for Robert, you, you I worked for it? Robert Kelly. Listen to me. I worked for Robert Kelly. Okay? This just happened. And we get to Chicago, I talk to Daryl. I say, man, what you doing, man? He can't do this, man. I was supposed to call Daryl, but my loyalty was to Robert. Right that, then. That, I didn't know he was sleeping with him. Well, you knew he was about know to marry you. You knew, you, knew, you, knew, you, knew, you knew it was uncomfortable, that it was illegal? You, you it was knew uncomfortable that she's a minor? I mean, it was it, an uncomfortable situation. Are you a father? Uh, at that moment, are you? Are yes, you? I am. So, yes, you, I am. Do you have a daughter? I have remorse. I have remorse for that man so much. It was a bad decision. I made that. I'm not a perfect person. Something.